Hi students, welcome to Year 10 Science and the Space Topic. This is video number three, and now we're going to look at one of the important characteristics or measures of stars, which is apparent versus absolute magnitude. Apparent magnitude is a very old concept. In fact, it dates back to the Greek philosopher Hipparchus, um, who devised a scale, a six-point scale, based on how bright stars appeared. Uh, to him in the night sky. Um, the brightest stars were given the uh, a classification of one bright down to six which were the most dim. This scale is roughly a, a, a 2.5 scale so about uh, one difference in this scale is about 2.5 times of brightness. Apparent magnitude is, is then obviously the brightness of a star as it appears to an observer on the earth. Now, obviously, if stars are very close to us, they appear exceptionally bright. And the most obvious example of that is the sun, um, which is just so incredibly close to us that it does appear to be a particularly bright star. Um, but uh, it is certainly not one of the brightest stars in the sky. I'll just readjust that so you can read it. Hipparchus. Um, so stars that... The problem with the apparent magnitude scale, of course, is that stars that look bright might not be as bright as other stars. They, must, they might just be a little bit closer to us. To get a bit of a sense of the scale of brightness, and obviously astronomers have expanded on this original scale of Hipparchus um, by including a lot more objects now that we've seen things with telescopes and so on. We've got a lot better an idea of how to compare each of these things. Um, quite obviously, or at least I hope quite obviously, the most, uh, the brightest object that appears in the sky is the sun. Um, and because we started with one as um, stars that were bright, um, obviously the sun wasn't included on this particular scale. So in comparison to the brightest stars in the night sky, the sun is massively bright. Uh, minus 26 on the apparent magnitude scale. Full moon, which is reflecting the light from the sun, is minus 12. Um, the next best star, or the next brightest star on the apparent magnitude scale is uh, Sirius, which is minus 1.5. So we still haven't quite reached the uh, positive numbers yet. Alpha Centauri um, sneaks in into the negative numbers and then uh, so on and so on. Now this is fine. It's good to have a bit of an idea about how things appear, but how things appear is not necessarily um, how they actually are. So we also needed another scale in order to try and give us a sense of how uh, how bright stars actually were. And this is the absolute magnitude scale. This is the little cluster of Pleiades over here. Ple nope. Let's try white. Pleiades. Um, and you can see, obviously, some of the stars looking particularly bright, but are these particularly bright ones bright just because they are giving out more energy or are they just uh, closer to us? So we needed a way of trying to determine or at least comparing stars on the basis of the actual amount of energy that they were releasing. So absolute magnitude of stars is a measure of their brightness as if we lined them all up at exactly the same distance. So it is then it's comparing apples and apples. We're actually trying to look at how each of these stars would be compared to each other. And if we pushed the sun back a distance to where some of the other stars uh, are, would it be as bright or would it not appear as bright? Now, because this is a scale that's, that's basically an update, if you like, on the apparent magnitude scale, uh, it has similar numbers. So it also has negative numbers. It also represents the fact that the brightest stars are actually at the negative end. And as you increase the number, we actually decrease the brightness. Another way of looking at um, absolute brightness is luminosity. And this is a term that we will probably be using more often than absolute um, magnitude or absolute brightness um, because it's one of the things that we look at when we uh, build maps of stars using that very important tool, the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Luminosity, um, you can just regard as a measure of the amount of energy radiated each second, and it's probably a slightly better um, descriptor of the um, of uh, than abs uh, absolute magnitude because um, 
magnitude and brightness is often about the component of the visible spectrum that we can see. So the light that falls within the, the rainbow, if you like. Um, but stars will release electromagnetic radiation outside of the visible spectrum and therefore something that has a high absolute magnitude at one particular wavelength, say uh, at red light, may not be the same for infrared or blue or ultraviolet. So um, we, we are um, again having to recognise that stars are releasing uh, electromagnetic radiation at a range of different frequencies. But there is a mathematical relationship and we can um, look at the link between um, uh, apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. There's a formula, which you don't need to know at this point, but you can Google it if you want to have a look. But effectively, the formula works at um, a distance of 10 parsecs. And I've just put down the bottom here. We'll look at some astronomical distances and measurements a little bit later. Uh, but a parsec is around about 3.26 light years. So it's a long distance. But it assumes that we're going to put all of these stars at basically the same place. That's where their apparent magnitude and absolute magnitudes would be equivalent. Uh, and that will give us a much better idea of exactly where each of these fits on the scale. And as I said, um, the important thing to remember about luminosity and brightness is that there are differences for different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, in the next video, we'll have a bit of a, more of a look at actual star life cycles. Thanks for watching.